The Chippewa Flowage. It'll win your heart if you let it. One of Wisconsin's outdoor treasures, the Chippewa Flowage and its supporting uplands are full of life, wonder, and beauty. But the flowage is sensitive, and like every natural resource, it deserves care and respect. The Chippewa Flowage, or Lake Chippewa, is located in Sawyer County, Wisconsin, near the home of the Lakutare Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, otherwise known as the Ojibwe or Anishinaabe. The flowage is the largest human-made lake in Wisconsin, an astounding 15,300-acre impoundment. Beneath the flowage lies the bed of the old meandering Chippewa River and the original homeland of the Lakutare people. The Ojibwe's of Pa Kwa Wong and the Lakuta Ray had long maintained an existence based on hunting, fishing, trapping, and gathering. The upper Chippewa River near the small town of Winter had been an active fur trading post and village since the early 18th century. On August 8, 1921, despite strong opposition by the Lakuta Ray, the Federal Power Commission granted a 50-year license to Wisconsin, Minnesota Light and Power to construct and operate a dam near Winter for the purposes of producing electric power and reducing flood damage downstream. Completed in 1923, the dam flooded the trading post and village known as the Post or Old Post. The dam flooded the original wild rice beds of the Chippewa River and submerged numerous graves of Ojibwe forefathers and mothers. So then, uh, Pakwewang Old Post was always a village long, long before even uh, French people came here. And again, there's even stories of battles and massacres along the Chippewa River with the Sioux people up by the Moose Lake. There was a big battle there in the 1700s. Then it, the warfare and everything shifted over to Minnesota and up uh, towards Dakotas, Minnesota, up towards Canada maybe. So then there was like time of peace here. So then these Ojibwe's, they had everything they needed in this country, all the wild rice, that one place on the flowage that was flooded. They estimated 29,000 pounds of finished rice came out of there every year. That's all gone now. Plus they had their maple sugar groves. They had their small little gardens, their farmlands. They had the graves of their people, the, the people that followed Medicine Lodge, the people that converted to church. They had their separate places where they were buried. Those are gone now. I had I'd heard about this from the time I was a little girl. You know, I was about seven when, in 1921, and uh, I can remember them talking about, you know, flooding our land. And, and later on, I knew that they had turned this down three times. The, the tribe had uh, said they absolutely did not want this to happen, but then the, the BIA just went ahead and, and put it through anyway, which is, you know, the way they did, did with us. And there wasn't much of anything we could do about it. As a Lakutare member, when you look at that flowage, what do you think? Uh, that, that's a hard one. Uh, I, lo I look at the flowage and uh, I think about the fact that we have to go 30 miles away now to, uh, to harvest rice. And uh, we used to be able to just go right out here and, and get it. And so... Uh, <clears throat> I pay a price, my daughter pays a price, and everyone after us pays that price. Deep wounds take a long time to heal, but the Chippewa flowage has become a valuable resource to many people around it. The flowage is a popular vacation spot for those who enjoy sport fishing, camping, boating, or just being in the north woods of Wisconsin. There is a concern that lack of care and respect will damage the waters of the flowage and the life it supports. 
boat wakes and poor lakeshore development are eroding the banks of the flowage. The buildup of organic matter and nutrients depletes the dissolved oxygen in the water, suffocating fish and other organisms. The added silt also clouds the water and makes it difficult for water plants to grow. These plants not only provide habitat for the local fish and waterfowl populations, they also protect the banks from erosion. Without these plants, fish, animal, and birds will not have a place to nest, lay their eggs, or hide from predators. These animals are part of the Chippewa flowage community. Boat noise can be very disturbing to nesting loons and other animals. If boats on the flowage are too noisy, the animals will leave for more tranquil environments. In addition, many of the chemicals we use find their way into the flowage. They come from septic tanks, lawns, boat engines, roads, underground storage tanks, gardens, and other places, and they eventually reach the flowage waters. Some of these substances, like those found in motor oil, are deadly to fish and wildlife. The Chippewa flowage is a sensitive environment. Without adequate respect and care, Erosion, noise, and dangerous chemicals will damage the waters beyond repair. Fortunately, many people are working to ensure the protection of the Chippewa flowage. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources manages the waters of most of the flowage. It is the lead agency responsible for its adequate care and protection. The Lakota Ray Conservation Department and the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission have developed several plans to monitor and maintain the health of the flowage. It's a, it's a way of life. You're part of it. We're not separate from the natural resources. And like, like the common thought nowadays, you're the steward over it. Mm -hmm. So when you're part of it, you know, it's life. So what we're doing right now from a tribal government standpoint is we're working on a Chippewa flowage management plan in conjunction with the DNR and in conjunction with the U.S. Forest Service. We're the three main landowners on the, on the flowage here. And the main goal of it is to protect the flowage in its wilderness state. We have a purple loosestrife project where we're trying to eradicate uh, purple loosestrife on the flowage. Uh, the tribe asked us to, to get involved in that. Uh, we also have a, uh, we're, we're assisting the tribe on the Chippewa flowage management plan, and uh, we're also involved in the muskie study. I don't think we could ever get it back to what it was, although we are looking at some of that, start managing the flowage instead of for hydroelectric power, start managing it maybe for wild rice again, reseeding some of that, managing it in a little different way. While the tribe works hard to ensure the future health of the flowage, it is a bittersweet reminder of promises broken and battles lost. Before the dam at winter created the Chippewa flowage, the Wisconsin-Minnesota Light and Power Company agreed to move some of the buildings of the village of Old Post to a new location called New Post. The company promised to move the remains of threatened graves to a new location on dry ground. The company fell short, however, and for the next 50 years, various grave sites were exposed every winter when dam operators lowered the water level. In the 1920s, Wisconsin Minnesota Light and Power reorganized as the Northern States Power Company and in 1971 reapplied for a renewal license. Lakota Ray members vehemently protested in 1971 and occupied the dam site as part of the Red Power Movement. The tribe also launched a lawsuit for damages over the entire history of the Chippewa Flowage Project. It wasn't until 1985 that Lakota Ray and Northern States Power ended their legal battle. The band took over operation of the dam and built its own electric generating plant. Northern States Power also paid for past damages and legal expenses. What the tribe and the NSP agreed to was to create the hydro plant and uh, produce a, a small amount of power. This is not a big hydro plant. This is, it's, uh, that's been, and the tribe got a approved loan, but we paid the loan back. It, did, it wasn't anything free here about this. We sell directly to Northern States Power. We have a power sales contract. We have no distribution of power. Um, we go and we feed the grid. 
The Chippewa flowage remains an integral part of the Lacouture heritage. Every spring, band members practice age-old spearing traditions on the flowage, a rite reserved by treaties signed in the mid-19th century. Many hope to bring wild rice back to areas of the flowage and restore yet another important part of Ojibwe culture. The Chippewa flowage is a precious resource full of life, wonder, and beauty. To ensure the long-term health of the flowage, please be kind to the water. Boat slowly near shore and sensitive areas. Respect the wildlife that share the water. Refrain from using dangerous chemicals that could find their way into the flowage. Be respectful of age-old traditions like spearing and ricing. Be aware of the history beneath the water. This is the, this is the center of the earth. Right here, this is the center. And, and, and wherever you do live, I guess, is the center. But to me, this, this is the most important place on earth. And, and it's anything that happens to it that's wrong, you know, it, it's, it's hard to handle. Well, you know, the bear and the deer, they don't know. So you got to protect what's here. Education of the mind is different than educating your heart. And uh, uh, although we might be able to educate people's minds until they've had the, uh, a loss like we've had, I doubt that they're in their heart that would have the same kind of knowledge that we have. Leave it alone as much as you can. We're running out of places like this.